Welcome to the Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Weekly Option. This is episode 308 on February the 2nd, 2024. I'm your host, Eric, and this week's show will cover the trades from last week on Rumble, Inc., Truist Financial Corporation, and Cisco Systems, and we discuss three new trades on SunPower Corporation, General Motors, and Affirm Holdings. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. Now, what's better than old highs? You guessed it, new highs. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 545 points, closing at 38,654 points. The S&P 500 Index picked up 67 points ending the week at 4,958 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week this week is peak mental states. I was a kid in the 80s who used to stay up late at night watching TV. And if you stayed up late enough, you would start seeing these infomercials. One of my favorite infomercials was from a big guy named Tony Robbins. I was fully mesmerized by his advertisements. It was all about becoming the best version of you that's possible. I was also a bit of a nerd, and you know, since I couldn't buy his course, I was a kid, I could find his books at the library. I may have been in junior high when I first read Unlimited Power. In that book, he spoke about this concept called peak states. It was all about training your mind to be at its best when you need it to be. Most people are easily controlled by their emotions. It's possible to take control of your mind so that you don't get wrecked by your emotions during the trading day. And if you ask anyone who trades real money, you'll quickly find out how emotional trading can actually be. I have been actively training my mind for peak performance. One of the tools I like to use is affirmations. My goal is to etch these affirmations into my mind until they are first nature to me. They need to become part of me. Affirmations are a great way to cancel out any negative talk you might have in your head. So if you've ever thought things like, I'm a bad trader. Every time I buy, the market decides to sell. Or any other limiting belief that might be hurting you, affirmations can be a great way to overcome them. Tony Robbins was also big on using motion to change your emotion. At his seminars, he'll teach you how to make a move that trains your mind to get into its peak state so that you're ready to perform it at its best. Just to be clear, I'm not actually promoting Tony Robbins or any of his techniques. I'm just saying that learning to get into your best mental state for trading is key if you want to be successful. Trading is absolutely a mental sport. It's a mental game. So that's it for the topic of the week this week. Let's go ahead and dive into the review of last week's trades. And uh, for the credit spread and the debit spread, I'm actually going to get a little more advanced. So just follow along with me if you can. And if you, if you don't understand... Honestly, just send me an email. So we're going to start off with the cover call on Rumble, Inc., symbol R as in Romeo, U as in Uniform, M as in Mike. At the time, the stock was trading for $6.04 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the February 6.5 call at $0.55. Cents. That could give us a return of 16.72% in three weeks. Well, shares of Rumble gained $0.87, cents, ending the week at $6.91 per share. The call option we sold gained $0.20, leaving us with a net profit of $0.67 if we were to close that trade out immediately. Now, with stock nearly $1.50 above our break-even point, this trade is clearly working out, so no adjustments are needed at all on this trade. The option will expire in two weeks, so I'll definitely keep track of stock price between now and then, but if it stays up where it's it's looking right now, if it stays above $6.50, I won't have any Uh, any issues, no adjustments are needed at all. And as always, keep track of that break-even point. Next up, we have the credit spread on Truist Financial Corporation. 
Symbol T is in Tango, F is in Foxtrot, C is in Charlie. Now, at the time the stock was trading for $37.83 per share, I looked at selling the February 37 half, 37 put spread at 21 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 29 cents per spread. Well, shares of Truist Financial lost $1.04, ending the week at $36.79 per share. The out of the money put spread that we sold is now in the money, which means we're losing money. Now, we have two weeks left before expiration. I say this because I can pause a little and see what I think the stock is going to do next. If I believe it's going to push higher in the coming week, then I'd rather not make an adjustment just yet. The adjustment I'm looking at, or the one I typically make, is to sell a call spread with strikes higher than the put spread. Now, I could sell the 37 half 38 call spread at $0.11, cents, which honestly isn't too appealing to me right now. I could also sell the 37 37 half strike call spread at $0.13. Cents. Now, these are the same strikes as the put spread, which means I'll be selling the box. Now, we sold the put spread at $0.21, cents, and I would be selling the call spread at $0.13. Cents. That adds up to $0.34 cents to sell the $0.50 cent box. We would be looking at a guaranteed loss of $0.16, cents, which may sound bad, but remember, our goal is to always be locking in profit and limiting a loss. We could lose $0.29 cents on this initial spread right now, or we would at least lower our loss down to $0.16. Cents. It's not great, but... It also works. So for now, I'm going to wait and just see how the stock price moves in the coming days before I make a final decision. And if you'd like to have a better or deeper understanding of pricing off the box, send me an email and we can definitely set up a phone call. All right. Our final trade from last week was a debit spread on Cisco Systems. Symbol C is in Charlie, S is in Sierra, C is in Charlie, O is in Oscar. At the time, the stock was trading for $52.14 per share. I looked at buying the February 51 half 52 call spread for 31 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 19 cents, or that would be a 61.29% return in three weeks. Well, shares of Cisco lost $1.96, ending the week at $50.18 per share. The in the money call spread that we bought is now out of the money. That means this trade is currently also losing money. Now, the stock price is $1.63 below the break-even point, and with two weeks left, we likely should consider making an adjustment. I can sell the February 51 half, 52 half call spread at $0.29. Cents. That would offset the loss that we took this past week and leave us short the 52, 52 half call spread, which is right now out of the money. Now, because we paid $0.31 cents to enter the spread, we'll actually have paid two cents to sell that credit spread. This means if we lose on the trade, meaning if stock goes above $52.50 per share, then the loss will be the full value of the spread plus the overlap of the spread we bought. In this case, that means a total of 52 cents. Um, that's 50 cents for the spread plus the two cents that's going to be overlap from the previous spread. Now, this is risky mostly because we are making the trade more risky by this adjustment, but possibly we're increasing the likelihood of a profit since this new credit spread will, will be almost $2 out of the money. So, you know, in general, uh, I'm saying that even though we're adding risk, it looks more likely that we're going to make a profit because the spread is fully out of the money. Now, as always, you really have to understand the risk involved in making the trades and these adjustments. And if you'd like a better explanation, once again, shoot me an email. The main thing is to pull out your paper and follow what's happening so that you can fully understand. I could talk to you until my face is blue, but it's not going to be until you actually take some ownership and actually write it out that you're actually going to understand. It's not difficult to understand, but it is complex and it might need a little bit of time to sink in. So just write it out. Again, there's two weeks before expiration on this trade as well. So it um, gives us a little bit of time to make some decisions. All right, so that's it for the trade, trade review from last week's trades. This is going to be the last week that we'll cover trades expiring on February 16th uh, since the expiration date is two weeks away. It is so wild to me to think that we're about to start trading March expiration options, but... Um, hey, that's the way life goes. Time does not slow down for any of us. 
So let's dive into this week's trades. Um, we're going to start off with our covered call on Sun Power Corporation, symbol S as in Sierra, P as in Papa, W as in Whiskey, R as in Romeo. The stock ended the week at $3.43 per share. I'm looking at buying stock and selling the February 3 half call at $0.45, cents, hoping for a return of 15.16% in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $3.43 and then selling the February 3.5 call at $0.45. Cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $3.50 per share the break-even price on this trade is $2.98, and in real terms, the stock purchase will require $343, and you'll collect $45 for selling the option. Next up, we have a credit spread on General Motors, symbol G as in golf, M as in Mike. The stock ended the week at $38.90 per share. I'm looking at selling the February 38 half 38 put spread at $0.16, cents which could give us a maximum possible loss of $0.34 cents per spread. Now you enter this trade by selling the February 38 half put at $0.59 cents and concurrently buying the February 38 put for $0.43. Cents. This is a credit spread because we're selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $38.50 per share. The break-even price is $38.34 per share and in real terms, you'll receive $16 per spread that you sell and have $34 at risk. And then our final trade on the week is a debit spread on a firm holdings, symbol A as in Alpha, F as in Foxtrot, R as in Romeo, M as in Mike. The stock ended the week at $41.01 per share. I'm looking at buying the February 40 and a half, 41 call spread for 30 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 20 cents, or that's the 66.67% return in two weeks. Now you enter this trade, by buying the February 40 and a half call for $4.40 and concurrently selling the February 41 call at $4.10. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $41 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $40.80 per share and in real terms, you'll pay $30 to enter the spread and your maximum gain is $20 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for following along with me. Thank you for the emails that you guys sent over the last couple of weeks too. I'm still uh, getting to a few of them. Um, so if you haven't heard back from me, you will soon. Again, I answer all of my emails directly. I do not hire an assistant uh, to do it. I also have not created an AI chat bot to respond, although I've considered <laughs> I've been playing around with the AI tools uh, quite a bit lately. It's phenomenal what's coming and what's possible today. So mind-blowing. Anyway, have a great weekend and as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.